I know why you're clapping so loud. You looked at the schedule and saw this is my last speech. You don't have to listen to me anymore. <laughs> you think you're relieved? I'm relieved. <laughs> uh, I want to also echo my appreciation and gratitude to TJ and Maria for putting this thing together. Done an amazing job. And then to top that all off, the entertainment last night was just a gut buster. That was wonderful. <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> um, I'm going to share a little bit about the resources that I've used. Um, we've talked a lot this weekend about the concept of audience relevance. And generally, we were thinking about that with the timing passages, but there's also a culture issue with that. So a book that uh, Tony Denton turned me on to called Reading Scripture Through Western Eyes. It's by uh, Brandon O'Brien and E. Richards. That book really opened my eyes to how we read scripture through Western eyes because we're Westerners. Um, I think both of the authors were missionaries in other cultures and that opened their eyes and they share uh, their experiences on how these other cultures uh, interact with scripture. And, uh, and they also deal with the New Testament generations and setting. So I found that very informative and enlightening on how without even realizing it, we have a bias. We, we read things from a Western scientific mindset and that's not how the scriptures were written as we've heard many times this weekend we're reading somebody else's mail so we need to read it the way they would have read it and understand it the way they would have understood it uh, and then of course the parousia by james stewart russell was uh, played a, a large role in my transition to preterism uh, an interesting story, Garrett, the retired businessman, whom both Bill and I trace our preterism back to, he was introduced to preterism by Russell's book, The Parousia. And after he had read enough of it to get the gist of what Russell was saying, he threw it in the fireplace. <laughs> he, he said, I can't, I can't accept this. I have to change my whole theology. He didn't have a fire going at the time. <laughs> and so maybe after sleeping on it or a couple days later, it, it, his, his spirit was unsettled. He reached in there, dug it out again, read it, and became a preterist. Um, others have mentioned Matthew 24 fulfilled by John Bray that also uh, started off with his little booklets that he had and then his book Matthew 24 fulfilled was also very helpful for me and then some other resources that I've enjoyed uh, are some podcasts uh, one is the theology program and you can find that on bible.org. And the, the theology program is basically a systematic theology course. So for me, if you're like me, if you grew up in church, you grew up with a particular teaching that was kind of delivered to you, that you didn't necessarily work through and obtain for yourself. Um, I, I remember one person saying that sometimes when you grow up in church, sometimes you get the answers before you ever have the questions. So um, I listen to, to podcasts when I'm commuting to work, uh, whenever my wife and I are driving places, she's always got podcasts downloaded. Uh, 
So this is one, and it's, I think there's six sections, and each section is probably, I don't know, 10 hours of discussion. So, you know, it goes through the, the history of the church, ecclesiology and soteriology and the gamut. And basically, it's uh, Michael Patton and uh, a partner of his are teaching this course in a live setting. And I think they actually videotaped it. You can buy the whole thing. I think it costs like $500. But I believe you go on this site, you can download the audios and even the PowerPoints to go with it. So that's something that I, I remember listening to it when I was painting my house one time. When, you know, out there painting a the house and going through the theology uh, program because it helps it just helps me establish a foundation it was good to hear the history of the church and going through the different uh, ecumenical councils and why different things happen in the history of the church similar to that is um, another systematic theology program that William Lane Craig does called defenders class he teaches a class and he basically goes through systematic theology William Lane Craig is one of my favorite theologians he's not a preterist but he's just incredibly intelligent this guy has learned foreign languages to go study under a particular theologian and I remember as I was listening to his defenders class and what he does is he, he teaches through the whole systematic theology course and it might take him two or three years in this classroom setting to do it. Then he'll start over and do it again. So I think he's on the, the third iteration right now. The first time I listened to it, I remember, of course, uh, eschatology is always the last section of systematic theology. I remember as he started in on the eschatology, I was getting very nervous because I was thinking this guy is so sharp. He might, he might be the one to poke the holes in predators. And I was starting, I was getting nervous. And I remember, <clears throat> I remember I was walking, I had finished my shift at work and then we had to walk out to the parking lot. So I had my MP3 player, my earbuds in, listening to William Lane Craig on my way to my car, uh, him talking about eschatology, and it dawned on me, I don't have anything to be nervous about. Because if he disproves preterism and has a more accurate truth, that's what I want. I'm not picking a theology and then just defending it to the bitter end. I want the truth. Amen. And so after that, I just relaxed. And I was actually disappointed in his treatment of eschatology because he is such a sharp theologian. I felt that he didn't deal uh, in depth with preterism at all. He did mention it. Um, well, I'll leave it at that. So that's just another resource. Um, and then I've also found it used to be iTunes used to have what they called iTunes U, iTunes University, where you get a lot of uh, colleges, universities had courses online. They don't actually have that iTunes U anymore, but I believe if you go to the iTunes store and then in the search box, put in like Westminster Theological Seminary, whatever seminary, you can find courses online, seminary, seminary courses that are free. Um, most of them are uh, audios, but you can, some of them have video as well. So I enjoy those resources for just uh, strengthening my overall theology. Uh, another resource that I think is important is reading or listening 
to opposing views. I just recently listened to a course on Christian critical thinking by Dr. Robert Bowman, who's a, a philosopher and apologist. And he said that if we're not willing to listen to opposing views, we're basically saying we're not willing to learn. You know, it goes back to what Proverbs says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And he also talks about primary and secondary sources. And he used the example of Calvinism and Arminianism. He says a primary source would be to read a book on Calvinism by a Calvinist. A secondary source would be to read a book on Calvinism by an Arminianist. And he says, if you really want to study the subjects out, you need to read or study material by people that hold those views. Um, to bring that point closer to home, John MacArthur explains preterism in his book, The Second Coming. That's not the preterism that we believe. It's his caricature of preterism. And likewise, I would say, don't let Don Preston explain the individual body view to you or the literal rapture. And also don't let Ed Stevens explain the corporate body view to you. Read books by the people that hold those positions. Weigh them in the balance. Study and come to your own conclusions. So those are just kind of some of the resources that I've used in addition to the books that many people have mentioned that have been, I've also found very helpful. So um, I haven't received any questions. Does, I don't know how much time we have left, but does anybody have a question about the magazine? Yeah, Charles. Well, uh, just a comment about something you said about reading Andrew Jackson's book. Mm -hmm. I listened to that series that he did on eschatology. Uh -huh. He made two interesting statements. He said, first of all, he said, um, you know, preterists have a very sophisticated answer about the second. He said the coming on clouds, they tie to Yahweh's coming on clouds in the Old Testament. And then he goes on and he says, but I choose to believe that there's going to be a second coming. So he just dismissed everything he just said. I mean, he's the smartest, he's one of the smartest apologists in America today, and he can't, he can't deal with it. Yeah, he actually, the preterism that he interacts with is more partial preterism because one of the issues he has, is he says, you know, at face value, when you look at their explanation on the timing passages, uh, apocalyptic language, cloud comings, he says, you know, that all makes sense. But the problem is you then have to have two comings because you have a coming in the destruction of Jerusalem. And then we still have a, a future coming. And so, you can't bridge that gap, like you were saying, Charles, that there, it was all fulfilled in AD 70. Any other questions? Brian, do you, as a publisher, do you, do you know why that preterist authors are not included in any of the Logos software or preferences? I don't. I just wondered if you had a No, I, I don't have a connection. Um, in fact, I, the second copy of my book, the second edition, I published using Zulon Press. I don't know, this is back in 2009. I don't know if Amazon had their program yet for self-publishing. Um, and so Zulon was about the only way I could see to be able to publish, kind of self-publish a book and have them get it into retail outlets like Amazon or Christian bookstores. They're connected with Christian bookstores. My first edition, um, I basically, I laid out the format, sent it to a printer and they printed, I don't know, a thousand copies or whatever and, and shipped them to me. And then it's up to me to 
distribute them. And so on the, the second go around, I decided that I would use Zulon because they had the connections. People could look it up on the internet. They could go to their Christian bookstore and request it. It could be ordered. They could go onto Amazon and that. I, in hindsight, I wouldn't recommend going that route. Uh, for one, it's, it's very expensive. That's why my book is $20 and everybody else's is five or 10 because it, it just costs even for my price at my discount, um, it, it just becomes, I think, cost prohibitive. And now you have the option to use retailers like Amazon to have a program I would be more inclined to do that. I published my book through Amazon Dawn Create Space. Mm -hmm. One book or ten. Yeah. They have their space product. They just print. The regular print them is your order. I don't know what kind of equipment they have. That's pretty marvelous. But, uh, and even in the beginning, I ordered two or three, one book, one book of proofs, and then the next to the chain, and the next to the proofs. And then I'm the same price, I can get five books or ten or nine books. They ship them out in two days. <coughs> I don't know what they've said up there. She just said, uh, what business press? Anyway, it's worth great. They're in the midst right now of changing and create space over to something else. I hate that. Mm. Well, I also mentioned, I, I mentioned in one of my uh, presentations that I don't believe that either of my parents have read my book, but they do browse through the magazine, which just reinforces the thought that I had in creating the magazine that it's, it's much easier for people to browse through a magazine. So they'll, they'll go through and read articles and they'll comment on it from time to time. So maybe someday they'll, they'll crack open the book. All right, well, I appreciate you putting up with me. I've enjoyed all the rest of the speakers. It's been a wonderful weekend. I'm gonna relax now. <laughs>